Hey, welcome to All Right, What's Next? Uh, today we're going to freaking mess with a uh, new pin finishing station that I just picked up. Uh, I got uh, the accessory kits. I can do both uh, acrylic and uh, wood blanks with this. It's got the polishing different kits for that. I don't know if I needed it. I've been wanting to try it. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered it from uh, Penn State, not the college. It's uh, Penn State Industries. Check them out. They got all kinds of cool shit. They're not sponsoring me. They're not paying me anything. But what I got is this pen finishing station. You can put your pen blanks on here and sand them and finish them if you want. That's what this is intended for. But it also has um, the accessories for doing wood buffing and uh, acrylic buffing with different uh, wheels and polishing compounds. I already got it out of the box. This is what it looks like. It's just basically kind of like a lathe. It's a motor. It's got the headstock, the tailstock. It comes with a a pen mandrel. You can slide this in here. Slide your tailstock over, goes in here, you get everything locked in place. You can put your pin blanks on here, do all your sanding and finishing instead of doing it on the lathe. I don't know why you would do that other than unless you're, you have a, an assembly line going where somebody is over there turning the blanks, somebody is sanding and polishing the blanks, somebody's assembling the pins. That way you can just grind out pins and get them done super fast, which is exactly what that'd be. It would just be a grind. It would suck. It'd be like, be like a job. <coughs> so we probably won't ever need to use that. I got this specifically to buff the wood and acrylics. More or less the acrylics. I don't know about the wood. The wood, I get a really nice shine on there. And I don't know if this is really going to be all that useful for buffing uh, acrylic pen blanks. Because you can get a pretty decent shine on acrylic pen blanks on the lathe using the uh, uh, the wet sanding pads up to the 12,000 grit and plastic polish. But when I get my next lathe, I don't know when I'm going to get it, hopefully sometime in the next 50 years, uh, I want to start getting into more decorative, artistic type of uh, ar acrylic lathe turning where you're going to have actually completely transparent uh, acrylics and if you have any minor defect in that it's going to show up bad it's going to look really bad and it won't have that crystal glass clear shine that you want it to have and that's what i wanted this for but we're going to go ahead and try it i've got a couple of pin blanks set up that we can test this on in here is the accessories that i bought so I got this, this, and some other pen blanks and things like that. It comes with a catalog. It's got a whole bunch of other things that you can buy and waste all your money on. Uh, check them out if you want to get into the hobby. I got me a couple of uh, Anvil EDC pen and pencil sets. The everyday carry. That's, a, that's what I carry every day. They just came out with the, the pencil kit. I absolutely had to have it. And if I'm going to buy the pencil kit, i got to buy a pen kit so I can do matching blanks to a nice pen and pencil set. But they have nothing to do with this. Just something I bought. Because if you're going to order something from Penn State, it's usually like $8 shipping and handling on your order. Uh, so if you're going to order something, don't order just a single uh, pen blank. Because then you're going to spend $10, 12 $15, depending on what, what pen kit you get. And then another $8 on top of that. Save up your money. Buy a whole bunch of stuff. That way it's still $8 shipping and handling for everything you ordered. So, you know, I've got, a hunt, uh, I think, about $240 worth of stuff that I bought. $8 shipping and handling. So if you spend $10 on an item, it's still $8 shipping and handling. $240, $8 shipping and handling. So it would be stupid to just buy one small little individual item. Save up, make big orders. So, other things that are in the box, the acrylic buffing system. And the wood buffing accessory set. 
we'll start with the acrylic buffing set. Got the instructions. It comes with this mandrel. This will house these two different wheels. You got one for buffing, one for polishing. So, and it also comes with the buffing compound for acrylics. It's a blue block of whatever. I don't know what it's made out of. So, we got a tan wheel and a white wheel. According to the directions, your tan wheel will go on first. So we spin these knurled nuts off. Remove, remove. This spacer will go on, will stay on first, and we'll thread our uh, tan wheel. This is the wheel that will take that blue compound. All right, that goes in there. Then the spacer goes on. Then we get our white wheel. Thread it on. Spacer. Washer. There's two different size neural nut. One will lock this in position. So now we need to install it. We got that's the wrong size. There's a flat face on here that'll slide in. That locked in, bring up your tail stock, get it locked down tight. And you put this, the last knurled nut on here. That locks it in the tail stock. Give these things a second little wrong goddamn Allen wrench. Tighten these things down one little bit more. All right, that is the acrylic one. Let's test this one out. So I have two pre-turned acrylic pin blanks. They're already pretty shiny. I ran it up through the uh, 12,000 grit wet sanding. Uh, I did not use the plastic polish on here. But once again, I don't know how much it's gonna improve this because it's such a small item and they're not transparent. Hey, it comes pre-turned on. That's pretty cool. Oh, I'm out of beer, Victor. All right, so let's get the uh, polishing compound out here. Oh, you know what? You should tighten down your tailstock so it doesn't freaking vibrate all over the damn place.
A lot of fibers on it. All right, we got the wheel loaded up. Yeah, I think it's, let's move over to the, uh, the finishing wheel. Yeah, I know you won't be able to see it. My camera can't do really close-ups. But there is a definite improvement. I, I can see on the, the light shine, there is almost kind of a milkiness to it on the one that I didn't polish, as opposed to the one that I did. The one that I did is extremely clear to where you can actually kind of see and you can see the brass tube that's in there really well, which I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good thing because you probably don't want to see the damn brass tube that's in there. But... Yeah, it, it, it did increase the level of shine on this thing. I'm excited to see what it'll be like when I actually get into the larger acrylic projects. So let's buff up this other one real quick and then we'll move on to the, onto the wood. The wood buffing kit has three wheels. Dark brown, white, tan. That looks like dark brown. Those look like the same goddamn color. Let's see here. Pro X3 and Pro X2. Probably... Pro X2 is going to be what's considered the white. Yeah, if you look at them. This one's really made up of super fine material. And this one is made up of not as fine. I don't know. They look goddamn the same. This is going to be the finishing wheel. This will be the last one in the in the in the line. So it's going to start with this one, just based off of the, the look of the picture. This one's supposed to fray out more. And I guess this one is slightly lighter than that one. That on first. That one on. Spacer. The slightly wider version of this one. That one goes on there. Another spacer. Then the so-called uh, tan. Final one. That goes on there. That. Washer. Larger neural nut. Put some torque on the neural nut so these things don't spin freely. Grab your uh, tail stock. Try and get it the hell back in the T-tracks. It's ain't going well. Apparently you don't want to just take the tail stock all the way off on this one. There we go. Slide the tail stock on. Shit, that one goes to the other. Alright, so, turn the motor about 2,000 RPM, medium speed for each wheel, and appropriate 
bar. Press the compound bar into the wheel for a few moments. Build up heat for the compound soft and transfer into the fabric. When the wheels are loaded, set the speed to a high speed. Hold the pin barrel firmly in your hands. Start the at wheel one sequentially. Pin barrel to the buffing wheel. Run the barrel up and down in the direction of the grain. Buff the entire barrel. Read the process each of the three polishing wheels. Redress the wheel to compound when necessary. Caution if several Time to use the buffing system. All the wheels will shed. This is normal stop after time. It is advised to available to have a vacuum available to suck up the loose fabric that might come off the wheels. Okay, so which one of these? Bar B, D, and F. That makes perfect sense. Wheel 1. Proxy 1 Dark Brown. Let's write on here first. Wheel one. Let's see here. Wheel two. I'm going to be white. That's white. So. And this will be uh, carnauba wax. Tan. So, wheel one compound. Let's load this guy up here. Wheel one is loaded up. Let's try to load up wheel two. Wheel two is loaded up. Let's load up wheel three. All right, we are loaded up. Alright, so I turned these blanks the other day. One of them, I went through the whole process of uh, doing the Triple E Ultra Shine and the Shell of Wax, which is I normally use for doing pen blanks. So this one's already nice and shiny. This one, I just sanded it up through uh, 600 grit. I want to turn, polish that on here and see if there is a difference between the two. And if there is, then I also want to go back through and I want to re-shine this one and see if it changes it. So let's start by polishing this one. All right, the Carnuba wax is on there. It is not as shiny as using the Triple E and the Shella wax. Not to mention, uh, with the Shella wax, it is a nice, almost glass smooth surface. With this Carnuba wax on here, it almost has, it's not sticky, but it, it just feels like it drags on the skin when you go across it. Um, no, I don't think I would use this for, for wood at all. The, run your grits through freaking 600 grit sandpaper, Triple E Ultra Shine, put that on there, and then put three coats of this Shell Wax on there, and it gives... 
an extremely hard, extremely shiny, very durable surface. For doing wood, now I'm not impressed with the wood polishing. This is low quality in comparison to what the fuck what these two products provide and they're they're extremely simple so uh, probably shouldn't have wasted my money on this particular setup i still wanted this and the uh, the mandrel for the acrylics and i got this because it wasn't that much more to do this and i wanted to see if i could actually put a really nice super high polish shine on which i was already doing with these products so you know I don't recommend the wood polishing station. But I do recommend the acrylic one. If you want to do acrylics, you probably want to get one of these things. So, yeah, if you're going to do wood, wood blanks, uh, triple E, shell wax, acrylic blanks, you got to have the uh, wet sanding pads up to 12,000 grit and then use the acrylic mandrel with the blue buffing compound to really put that glass smooth shine on there. I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, um, hit the like button, tell me what you thought. We'll see you next time.